Hey guys, so today we're going to be talking about temporary color. Okay, temporary color is also another name that you can utilize for certified color. Okay, so temporary color um, is used when you need something quick and easy, but you don't want to change the color of your hair, um, but you need a new look for the night or a new look for a costume or just maybe to change a little of the doiling hair and get rid of some yellowing and try to bring it to more vibrant look there and a healthier look. OK, so used to like I was back in the day, my grandmother or great grandmother and my grandmother, uh, they all get together every single Friday. They went to the beauty parlor, got their hair rolled and also would go ahead and uh, get a color rinse put in there. So the hair always appeared to be like a light lavender or a little purple or even blue. So uh, we always kid her, you know, she was going to get her blue hair done. So and you'd see at church the next Sunday, every little old lady in there had blue hair or purple hair or a light lavender hair. And so they would use what we call a color rinse. OK, at that time. Now, a color rinse is to restore faded hair. OK, it's used and any kind of a temporary hair color is not going to lift and deposit. What it's going to do is going to just coat the cuticle. So we will go into hair structure. But for this particular lecture, we're not going to I'm not going to go deep into hair structure. We're going to go ahead and just stick there. It's going to coat the cuticle. The molecules of temporary hair color are very, very large. So. Since they have a large molecule, they're not going to be able to go into the cuticle inside. So it's going to sit on top of the hair and just coat it and like put like a little sheath over the hair, which gives it that color. OK, so that's how it works. It works like a coating action. OK, so this is very important to remember. Temporary hair color has large, the largest molecules. Therefore, it doesn't penetrate the cuticle and it uses a coating action. Now, when you're utilizing temporary hair color, it's only going to last until you shampoo your hair. So that is one of the good things and a bad thing. It's good because when you want to get rid of it, you can. And when you don't need to get rid of it, um, or let's say that you want to get rid of it, you know, it's going to be easy just to go and shampoo it out. It's bad because it only lasts that long. So it's not going to be there. If you really like the color, you're going to have to reapply, reapply, reapply in order to keep that color in there. Now, its disadvantage is, is number one, just like we said, it's as good as the next shampoo. Another disadvantage is that it's going to be basically a thin coat so that it can actually rub off and stain clothes or pillows. Um, it's going to come off if you were to go to the gym and you start perspiring. So you're going to have color running down you. Or if you go out and it's a nice rainy day, probably not a great idea to use that particular product on that day unless you have a really great umbrella. Um, and that's another reason why back in the day, a lot of uh, little ladies, they used to protect their hair with all by means. They'd have these plastic caps that would go over their heads and they put that on if it's a rainy day and umbrellas to make sure no moisture can touch their hair so that color doesn't run and also it doesn't mess up um, the curl that they had in there and the way they have already fixed their hair for the day and basically it would stay that way for the entire week now this color cannot lift so there's no lifting action this it only coats okay if you have very porous hair because you have lifted that hair several times and now you have blonde 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 platinum blonde hair and you put a temporary color in there is a possibility it can stain because the cuticles of that hair structure are open and those molecules may be able to penetrate and if you have very damaged hair and porous hair there is a very good possibility that color will go into that um, cuticle and it will stain OK, and therefore you will not be able to rinse that out. The only way to get rid of it is to try to extract the color or cut it off. It eventually would probably fade away, 
hopefully, but it does depend upon the hair and as much damage. So if you really are unsure about it and scared because you have blonde hair and you don't want to use a temporary color, then I would suggest that you do a strand test to take a small piece of hair, color it, and then try to, uh, you want to dry it and then go ahead and try to rinse that out. If it rinses out, you should be fine. If it doesn't, don't do it in the rest of the hair because it's not going to be good later. You'll never be able to get that out. Now, some one example of a temporary color that you may not even think about, but it is, is like mascara. When you're putting mascara on your eyelashes, this is a temporary hair color. And you can use different colors of mascara to go with different outfits, um, glimmery. You can use natural colors and then also wonderful colors to use when you're going for uh, special effects makeup or costumes like they have silver and white. So there are many different mascaras you can use and that way and that is a example of it other ones are color rinses color rinses um basically are just like this right here now i am not promoting these products but i am just showing you what a color rinse is it's a bottle okay and the colors in the bottle they have many different ones um, that does there so i want to go ahead and show you some more so you have an array of color rinses that you can choose from and they have a color chart that you can follow through now if you have nice blonde hair and you're putting color rinse there know it it can stain it if you if the hair is very porous okay if it's not and you have good healthy hair then you should be fine you can go a little bit darker and it should rinse out afterwards if you have a lighter hair and you're trying to go with more of a ashy tone silverish gray um, if you're trying to get rid of some yellowing that's in the hair, you can use more of a violet in there. They also have the same stuff in a mousse format, as you can see to the right up here at your screen. So they have it in a mousse format and they also have it in a bottle. Okay. So there is going to be a procedure for you to follow when you're doing this. And um, the procedure that we're going to use is a bottle format and we may also use a mousse format. I do also like for you to use a spray format, but you have to learn to get control of the spray. When you're utilizing a spray and the color sprays, um, you do have to have any kind of a backdrop to it so that you don't um, over spray and spray all of the hair or spray onto surfaces. It can stain surfaces, <clears throat> stain your hands. So you want to make sure also wash your hands, wear gloves when you're doing this. It can be a big mess if you're not careful. And there's a variety of colors, a variety of colors. So other ones that you can choose from with temporary colors. Um, I've used like this is just a shimmering hairspray and there's many different colors. You should see the colors of the bottles. Um, you can use reds, you can use purples, blues, greens, many different ones to choose from. So you can do balayages with sprays and it looks kind of natural. Um, strictly because of the fact that you're not just getting a straight line. You're actually getting a blended and a bleeding look in there so that it looks like it was a natural growth if you know how to spray it correctly. And especially if you start doing a light spray and then go down. You can also have color gels that you put in there. This is one that looks like one, but this is more of a semi, I'll tell you. It will stain if you're not careful with it. But this is also one that can wash out and they have color gels you can use. Another trick that a lot of people use um, is they just take some purple shampoo and just leave it in their hair for a while. And then when they rinse it out, then it comes more of a lavender ashy look. So that's another good trick to use in temporary color. It's not going to stay there long, probably a few washes and it's going to be gone. Um, so there's some really good things about that. Now procedure with it is once you have draped your client, your client is going to be at the wash bowl. You are going to wash their hair. And you're going to towel dry <clears throat> the hair and then make sure you have a towel up under there because you want to protect their clothes as well as the cape. Make sure that the client is definitely comfortable in their um, shampoo chair and, and lay them back in the shampoo bowl and very comfortable with that. Now, use gloves because this can stain your skin if you're not careful, depending on the uh, level of color rinse that you're using and the tone. And if you're using what we're going to be referring to is using an applicator bottle here. So just like that. And again, not pushing the product, just letting you know this is a product that's out there on the market that's used widely today. 
um, back in the day, this product right here was used over and over and over again. And this is actually what used to be in my great grandmother's house all the time. She'd always have this color rinse in her house and be using that. So when you're using this, make sure again that I said you have to have your gloves on. You want to read the directions. Most of the bottles should say that you're going to shake it very, very well um, before you do the application to make sure all the pigments that have settled in the bottle in the bottle will be mixed throughout. So you're getting an, as even as a tone you can. You're never going to get a really even tone because you're not lifting and depositing. You're only going to be putting like a small coating on there. So you're not going to get a totally even tone, but it should uh, blend very well. Now, once the client is sitting back, okay, you're going to do this over the sink and you're going to apply the color and work it in their entire head, okay? Then you just take a regular cutting comb and just comb their hair through just to sort of blend that color through. And then... Um, you're going to apply the color as necessary throughout the hair and just kind of blot all the excess so it doesn't drip on them with a towel and leave a towel there so that when you're combing out and brushing out and you're, uh, you're not going to drip on any clothes they have because it can stain clothes as well. After that, make sure that you do whatever styling means they, they want, whether they're just letting their hair air dry or you're going to blow dry it. Do not shampoo after this. If you shampoo, what's going to happen? It's a temporary color. It's going to wash out. There will be no color effect there. Do not shampoo. Once you apply the color, comb it, blot it, dry it. And then they are good to go from there. Um, make sure that you do discard any disposable materials they are. Clean the bottles off so they're not covered in color. And wipe them off and sanitize your workstation. Wash your hands with soap and warm water and make sure that you record any color that you used on the client with their color card so that you know exactly what you did last time. If they're happy with that, you just do the same thing. OK, so again, just remember, these are very large molecules. They are not going to penetrate through the cuticle. They are going to sit on the side like a sheath. Um, remember, it is a coating action. It only lasts shampoo from shampoo. It can stain. So beware of that. And this comes in many forms of sprays, mousses, color rinses in a bottle, many different forms that you can actually choose and fun things to use when you just need to go to something different for the night. And but you don't want to keep that color forever. So that's a really great thing. So remember that the, if you're using a blue violet rinse, this can help to neutralize any yellowing in the hair, um, maybe referred to as a yellow cast to it. And um, that is it for color rinses. That's going to be 581 on your practical. And if you have any questions with that, you know how to just reach out to me by email or also by remind. And be sure to read over your info sheets. Your info sheets is what's going to be on the test with all the information that we just covered in the lecture. Okay, guys. Have a great day. Again, this was 581 Temporary Color.